In this video, I would like to talk about uh, runtime analysis of algorithms and the mathematical framework that we use uh, for uh, talking about uh, the runtime of different algorithms. Now, um, a, a module in data structures is not exactly the place that we can go very deep into this topic, uh, but later on in my algorithms uh, course, I will talk about this same topic in much more detail and more depth and more mathematical rigor. Uh, but it's important here uh, when we're talking about data structures to know about this uh, uh, because later on when we introduce different uh, data structures, uh, we want to be able to compare their performances when they are used in uh, different algorithms. Uh, so because of that, I'm going to give a very uh, introductory explanation of uh, analyzing the running time of different algorithms and uh, the big O notation. Uh, but as I said, it's going to be um, um, mostly uh, introducing the ideas and uh, not showing the actual mathematical definitions. So uh, let's just start with a couple of observations. So think about any algorithm uh, that you know you uh, you want uh, an algorithm like the algorithms that we talked about uh, in terms of searching, like linear search and binary search. If you know about sorting algorithm or any other uh, program, computer program that you uh, want to think about. And uh, the first observation, and I want you to think about this yourself based on your experience, is that. In most cases, if your program or your algorithm is doing something interesting and meaningful, uh, the time that it takes for the program to finish its task depends on the size of the input. Uh, in other words, if your data that the algorithm is or your program is processing becomes larger and larger, uh, it doesn't take the same amount of time for the algorithm. So uh, time, as my first observation, I can say time depends on the size of your input, whatever the input is. For example, if you're uh, sorting uh, an array, the input is obviously the array itself. Or if you're searching in, in an array for a value, then your inputs are the array, then the value that you're uh, looking for, and maybe the size of the array as well, right? So time depends on the size of the input. If the size of the input changes, uh, most likely the time that it takes for the, for the program to finish its task changes as well. And for the second observation, I want to take this one step further and say, again, if your algorithm is doing something uh, meaningful, in most cases, if the size of the input increases, the time it takes for the algorithm to finish its task also increases, right? So um, uh, time increases when the size of input increases, right? Again, if you're thinking about the search algorithm, uh, the larger the array is, potentially it takes longer to find a value uh, in the array. Or again, if you're familiar with sorting, the uh, more numbers you have to sort, it, it's uh, probably going to take longer to sort them. So the running time or the runtime increases when the size of the input uh, becomes larger. And and um, now, based on these two, what we want is the following. What we want is we want to express the running time of an algorithm as a function of the size of the input, as an expression. In terms of, in terms of, the size of the input. 
So that's what we are adding. This is in project. Okay, now examples would be, and we will see examples in a moment, but right now, just to explain what I mean, is the following. If the size of the input is represented as, say, n, which is usually what we use for it, then we are looking for something like this. We want to say that the running time of some algorithm, when the size of the input is n, is an expression in terms of n. So maybe like 3 times n plus 15. Or for another algorithm, maybe the running time uh, when the size of the input is n is 2 times n squared plus 7 times n plus 1. Or for another algorithm, it could be that the running time of the algorithm is uh, 2 times log n plus 7. Right? So we express the running time as a function of, or as an expression in terms of, uh, the size of the input, which we usually represent uh, with n. Now, how do we actually do this? Let's start with a very basic example. Okay, so for this video, I'm not going to do the um, the search algorithms, uh, but rather I want to start with a simpler example, and that is the print function that we defined in the previous videos. So if you remember, it was a void function. Uh, called print array. And we use templates to define this, but it doesn't matter in terms of the running time. So let me just say that the type of the array is integer, and then its size is another integer. I used size in the previous video, but I'm going to use n here to represent the size of the input as it's, um, you know, the tradition. Okay, now if you remember, the main task is done uh, using a, a loop. I, I use the a for loop. So for i equal for int i equals for int i equals zero, i is less than the size, i plus plus. And then I'm using extra brackets here even though, even though I don't need to. And then inside we had a C out statement that says Look at the array at index i, whatever value you see there, uh, print that on the screen, and then followed by space character. And that's the end of the for loop. And then after the for loop, uh, this is optional, but uh, just to be exactly uh, you know, the same as the, the one that we did. After the for loop, after we, we are done printing everything in the array, we go to the next line. And that's when the function terminates. So this is the function. Uh, now we want to uh, talk about its running time in terms of n, which is the size of the input or the size of the array. Okay, now uh, we can do this either from the outside going in or uh, vice versa. So I'm going to start from the inside. So let's take a look at this statement here. Okay, let's see if we can figure out how much time it takes to execute this statement, this one line. Forget about the loop, forget about the function, all of that. Just one line of code in C++. Now, if you know about arrays, uh, you should know that accessing the ith element of the array, uh, the time that it takes doesn't depend on the size of the array. So, for example, if you want to know what is the 20th element in an array, the time that it takes to look that up doesn't depend on how small or large the array. The array could be of size 21, it could be of size 200 or 20,000, it doesn't matter. It takes the same amount of time to look at the ith element in an array. Okay, so it doesn't depend on the size of the input, which is n. And then when we look that up, we pass that to the Cout to be printed, and then we print a space. Again, none of this depends on how small or large your array is. So uh, following this, I can say that this takes some constant time. Now, what is that constant time? It's very difficult to say because 
It depends on your machine that you're running the code on. It depends on the compiler, not for this one, but in general, because compilers can do uh, some optimizations that are going to be different from one compiler to another. So again, uh, the, the exact amount of time is machine dependent, programming language dependent, and also depends on the compiler. So we all together uh, forget about that, and we just say that we care about the fact that it's a constant, so I'm going to use C for that. So the time that it takes to execute this one line of code is going to be some constant C. And here constant means does not depend, does not depend, on the size of the input, which is n, right? So that's what I mean by constant. Okay, so now we know if I want to execute this one line of code, um, once it takes this much time, some constant c. But then we realize that this line of code is inside a loop, and the loop iterates n times, So basically, I'm executing this line of code n times, which means that, it, and each time it takes this much. So the first time it takes this much time, and then the second time takes the same amount, and then the third time takes the same amount, and so on. So n repetitions. Therefore, c times n is the time that it takes for the entire for loop to finish its task. So this is the time spent uh, in the loop. Okay, we're almost done. So we finished, we started from the inside, now we did the for loop. The final thing left to do is the final C out. And obviously, executing this doesn't depend on N, the time that it takes. Uh, N can be 10,000 or 1 million or Two, it takes the same amount of time to do this, so it's a constant again, but probably not the same constant as this guy because here we have to do a lookup and then we have the space and all, and all. So let me use a different constant here, C prime. So after finishing the for loop, which takes this much time, we have to do this extra task as well. So we can say that the overall time is Cn plus c prime so as a function of n if you remember that was our goal so the running time of this function as a uh, this uh, function print array uh, as a function of the size of the array is uh, c times n plus c okay so that's the idea now uh, let me just tell you that as i said at the beginning this analysis is not precise i have to be more careful if i want to be very uh, accurate with my time analysis because, for example, the header of the loop is executed n plus one times, and the last time is when the condition is false. So we have to do that separately. But we are simplifying this a little bit here for for um, for the sake of you know the level of it. As I said in in a, in a lecture about algorithms, this will be done uh, more precisely. But as we will see in a moment, it's not going to matter at the end of the day. Uh, when, because of uh, what's called asymptotic notation. Okay, so that's the time analysis. But now we end up with this running time. Let me repeat that one more time here. So the running time that I ended up with is the running time of the print array function on an array of size n is equal to some constant times n plus another constant. C prime. Now, here what we notice is that even though we included these two constants C and C prime, we don't know anything about them. So, um, and they can be different from one uh, computer to another, from one programming language to another. If you do this in C or Java or Python or whatever, it's going to be different constants. Uh, and if you run it on different computers, it's going to be, again, different constants and all of that. Um, so they decided that um, what if we don't care about those constant conditions, right? What if we define a mathematical framework that we can ignore the constants altogether? Because 
you know, it, they, they, they are machine dependent and programming language dependent and all of that. Um, so that's the first idea. So here we have um, two ideas that together uh, create this, what's called asymptotic notation. I'm going to give you a definition in a moment. But the first idea is drop or ignore. Ignore constant coefficients. So if you have like p times n or seven times n or um, c times n and c is a constant, just forget about that and just represent that as n. The other idea that is also very important is when you have multiple terms in your expression. Okay, now let let me give you an example on this side here. Let's say the running time is n squared plus n. Okay, so we have some example that we did the analysis and the running time turned out to be n squared plus n. Okay, now one thing to notice is that when we talk about the running time of different algorithms, mostly we are interested in the running time as n, the size of the input becomes larger and larger. Okay. If your algorithm is very fast for a small input, but it becomes significantly slow uh, or much, much slower as n becomes larger and larger, then uh, probably uh, your algorithm is not uh, desirable. So what can we do uh, to address this is the following. So imagine if n is 10, okay? So if n is 10, then n squared is 100. So this is like 10% of this. Okay, but as n grows to say 100, then n squared becomes 100 squares or 10,000. Okay, now all of a sudden you see that this is 1%, it's a 10%. The, the share that n has in the expression is now 1%. Now, when n grows even larger, like 1,000, then n squared becomes 1 million. Right? And now the share of n in the entire expression, 1,000 versus 1 million, is 0.1%. Uh, so you see, as n grows, the point is that the role of n in this expression becomes um, insignificant. And n squared dominates n uh, more and more in terms of how important it is for the value of the entire expression. So the second idea is that when you have multiple terms in your running time, only keep the most significant one, okay? So that's the second idea. And these two together uh, create what's called the asymptotic notation. So uh, ignore terms with lower significance. Okay, so you have n squared and n, Drop the n, only keep the n squared. If you have n cubed and n squared and n, drop the n squared and n, n and keep only n cubed and so on. Okay? So um, I will introduce the notation in a moment, but let's do uh, a couple of examples to say, uh, to review you know, what we mean by this. So let's say your running time is 7 times n squared plus 100 times n. Okay, so based on this transformation that I talked about, first of all, we say we don't care about the seven. We don't care about the uh, constant coefficients, right? The first point was ignore constant coefficients. So this is just n squared. This is just n. So basically, I'm dealing with n squared and n. And between those two, n squared is more significant as n becomes larger and larger. So we simplify this expression into n squared. Or for example, if you have the running time to be two times n to the third plus 10 n squared plus 200 n plus seven. Then again, following the same kind of logic, you say, first of all, we don't care about the two or the 10 or the 200. Now we have n cubed, n squared, n and a constant. As n, as n becomes larger and larger, as n grows, n cubed dominates the rest of them. So n cubed, is the form that you're going to keep, is the term that you're going to keep. And then we drop the rest of them. 
Um, now, obviously, this is not going to be as accurate as that, but the benefits are, first of all, uh, the coefficients, we didn't know what they are. The second thing is that even though this is not as accurate, it's accurate enough because we then care about large values of n, then we can um, safely ignore the terms with lower significance because they become less and less significant as n becomes larger and larger, which is the case that we care about the most when we talk about running times. And all of this is called asymptotic notation. Again, I told you that this is going to be um, informal, our introduction uh, to asymptotic notation, asymptotic notation. And there are different versions of this depending on the application, but the one that we're going to look at is called big O. So in these cases, we say T of N is in big O of N squared. Or for this one, we say T of n is in big O of n cubed, and so on. Okay? So this big O built into it has the idea that we ignored, potentially we ignored constant coefficients, and potentially we dropped the terms that had lower exponents or they were you know, growing not as fast as the other one, and we only kept n squared or n cubed in our final. Um, so that's all built in into this notation of big O. Okay, so this is called the big O notation. Now there are other notations like uh, big omega, little o, uh, theta, and so on, but we are not going to talk about those here uh, for data structures, but algorithm course, um, all of those will be discussed as well. Now, in the next video, I will talk about, uh, I will introduce more examples and I will talk more about uh, the big O notation as well.